from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. It's the Cube live in Las Vegas for AWS Amazon Web Services reInvent 2018. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Dave, our sixth year covering AWS reInvent. We were, except for the first year, we weren't there but certainly it's been fun to watch the, the ma massive rise of the wave of the cloud and Amazon's discipline and execution. Our next guest is Roger Barga, General Manager of Robotics and Autonomous Services for Amazon Web Services. Great to have you, thank you for joining us. It's great to be here today. So, a lot of stuff to talk about. This, Amazon's got like this cult personality around, they do cool things, uh, they innovate as well as they take care of the, the basic cloud needs of more compute, better networking, more storage, and the core engine. Uh, robotics, autonomous, you think of cars, you think of future, flying drones maybe in the future. What's going on? What are you, what are you working on? Take a minute to explain what your job is and what you're doing at Amazon, because I think it's super important. We, we actually look at robots as being anything that senses, computes, and acts. And that opens up such a wide range of the definition of robot, from a washing machine to a SCADA system to the robots we think of actually it's a, the full spectrum is what we're trying to address. And we've announced a new service called AWS RoboMaker. It is designed to support the end-to-end -end application development life cycle for building yep. an intelligent robot, deploying it to one, ten, hundreds, thousands of robots out in the field, monitoring them. We are really addressing the developer need on how to build and scale and run a robotics business. You know what really resonates with me and uh, with you guys in Andy's keynote this morning was, he used the word builder a lot of times, um, tool for the right job. And I think that really connects with the culture that we're seeing in the world today. Maker Fair started it out. Robotics clubs in high schools are probably at an all-time high in terms of interests. Yes. It's not just a nerdy geek thing, it's actually kind of mainstream. Yeah. People are attracted to robotics, people have wearables. Yep. So you're seeing a world where technology and robotics are colliding. Mm -hmm. So this kind of falls into the new kind of persona developers that's out there. Yes. Who's building uh, robotic stuff? It's, there used to be some like special group of people, not anymore. Explain how you guys are going after the developers with this. Okay, so it is very focused on the developer and we started talking to our internal customers who are building robots. We started talking to external customers building robots to really understand the struggles that they had and have to face. And you actually realize that the roboticists tend to actually are deep in hardware. Drivers, actuators, sensors, and they are forced to be software engineers at the same time because <laughs> there's just not ready-made software and they have to go roll their own tooling. So we're actually providing them with the tools so they can actually focus on the hardware and the innovation that goes on there or adding the intelligence to the robot to carry out the more meaningful task. And again, we've had conversations with companies that are, that are building small appliances that basically they think of as a robot, a dishwasher that has sensors that will actually sense how the water flow is going, the temperature, and then take action all the way to a, a group that's actually putting a robot in the space station to take photographs all over, underwater robots, air robots, and the drones. So those Dean Kamen robotic competitions, right? You're familiar yes, with those, right? Yes, It was, it was all, you know, high school kids, and there's always a hardware team, which is kind of clear, and then the software team, which always struggles. So I, I'm envisioning that these guys are now going to be using you know, RoboMaker yes. as part of that, that team. So if I understand it, the mission is kind of develop, secure, deploy, and, and manage robotic apps. That's really what you guys are all about. A little bit more also. Please. So we've actually bundled in our cloud service for machine learning, for analytics, and for monitoring. And so now with Amazon Poly and Amazon Lex integration, you can talk to your robot. Your robot can respond to you. We can stream the video off the robot through Kinesis video streams and send it to recognition so the robot can actually see. You'll be able to see what your robot is seeing, run it through recognition, you can identify what it's, what it's seeing and be able to tell it, go to the refrigerator yeah. and it knows where the refrigerator is. Something else we've done, I think it's interesting to share with you, is that we've actually working with something called the Robot Operating System, which is the most commonly used open source software framework for robotics, ROS. Um, we have contributed all of our cloud extensions as open source to the community, and we're also technical steering committee members for ROS2, which is the next generation of ROS. 
we like to think of it as a commercial grade version of ROS, the Linux for robots. And we're also contributing open source to that as well. Because what you'll find is this is what developers are using and reusing. So if you have a sensor or an actuator for a robot you'd like to use, you're probably going to find ROS package already out there to actually drive that sensor or drive that actuator that you can use. And now you see new ones for our cloud services that you can turn monitoring on, machine learning services on as well. So you're contributing to the open source community, so that's going to accelerate the adoption. Yes. But you're also making it easier. I want you to explain how you guys are working to do that because yeah. if this kind of continues on this track, it's going to remove some of the blockers that are the barriers to get into this. And, that's what and to get yeah. the applications up and running, which have an impact on like fleet management to you know, anything. Yeah. I mean, that's really the problem statement here, isn't it? It, it really is, and it's really what our mission is. We're always looking at developers and how we can accelerate them and make them more productive. Let's say the three of us wanted to go off and build a robotics application. We'd have to make sure that the environment and all of our machines are the same, because you might have a DLL, a different DLL, or a different package, which means when we deploy to the robot, we're breaking it, we're not consistent. We actually offer a cloud development environment for robotics. With one click off the AWS management console, you can choose the operating system that you'd like to deploy to your robot. It'll download it, it'll configure that for you. It'll create scalable storage to store the artifacts as we build our robot and try different algorithms out. Yeah. It'll provision compute for, to compile our, our robot application. We even have pre-built applications to get you started and you have access to all the ROS packages. And so within minutes, we could be up and working together writing a robotics application. That's just part of it though. So again, I talked about the cloud service extensions, but simulation is such a huge thing because we may not even have our robot built yet and we want to simulate our robot. We offer pre-built worlds like a room in a house, a retail store, or a racetrack for the race car that you heard about today. And you can drop your robot in these environments and test it. You can turn a physics model on and say, my robot's carrying 500 pounds. Simulate, when you're happy with it, then you can deploy that over the air to your actual robot. And the simulation, you can actually run hundreds of them in, in parallel, faster than wall clock time. So it's literally, we could actually do a thousand simulation hours, probably in 15 or 20 minutes to test our robot. And that's the benefit of EC2 and all this compute. You spin up a supercomputer, basically, yes. bring it all together. You mentioned the Formula One thing, that's interesting. Yeah. What insights can come into this? And I want to get down to the intelligence piece, because when I met Andy, I just wrote an article yesterday on Forbes, with my, on my interview with him, he made a comment I want to add to the conversation. He said, the clouds are the brains, on-premises, the environment. So robots will need brains, so talk yeah. about the connection to the AWS cloud. Yes. So that's a key part, right? It so is. That connects to the cloud, so you've got a lot of brains, so you've got a lot of opportunities to connect services. What kinds of services do you envision connecting to the robots? Okay, so what was announced today with the race car, it's at, that car is actually trained in RoboMaker through simulation, through reinforcement learning. And so hundreds of simulations of the car trying to go around the track, all that information is being fed to SageMaker, which is using its reinforcement learning to actually build an algorithm, a better algorithm, and then pulling it back to the car and trying it over and over again. That's how you actually train the car. And you see that beautiful partitioning with the cloud, big compute, reinforcement learning, large data sets. The car, once you deploy the machine learning model to the car, it can actually continue to send up signals for more information. So as the car is being used for racing, you're still learning and still updating the model. So again, this beautiful partitioning. How's that, how's that data flow? So you got data coming off the car. Yes. You send it back up to the cloud. You then through, you, that, that's where the heavy modeling occurs, and then you push it back down. You push the small machine learning model back down. We have Kinesis data streams. We also have IOT, MQTT messages we can send back up to the cloud. And you really start to see the role of a cloud. And we have hundreds of devices out. Each one might make a mistake every once in a while, but collectively you're getting a large training set for retraining a model and pushing it back down. That's where deep learning really adds value to. It really is. And you mentioned uh, adding more personality to it before we came on camera, yes. uh, a robot you saw. This is really kind of where it's going to really kind of make it personalized. It, it is, and in fact, Leah, it's a, it's a robot that's made by, by robot healthcare systems, excuse me, robot care services. And Leah is an intelligent robotic walker, absolutely brilliant. The elderly and disabled can now live more independent, more agile lives. Um, it has 72 sensors, sense, compute, act. It figures out what the user's trying to do. The user now can actually interact with, with voice, 
through our Amazon Poly and Amazon Lux integrations. So with the walkers across the room, the user can say, Leah, come to me. And Leah will actually motor over to the user. The user can get on, Leah will sense that it's carrying load, and it can say, Leah, let's go to the front door, and Leah will start moving our way to the front door. That's just so natural. And that's the impact, real life impact of that. People who live alone, yes. uh, could have diabetes or maybe something uh, as they get sick, a robot could be tied into a health meter, I mean, this is kind of real world scenarios that aren't far away. No, it's They're not. They're happening now. It's happening right now. And again, you're starting to see the value that robots are going to bring to our lives. And again, roboticists have such hard problems to solve with the hardware and that algorithm they're writing. We really don't want the other work to have to be a burden for them. We really want to simplify that. So I'll talk about the TAM, the total market addressability here, because the, F, the, the Formula One, the developers, I get the developers, I get the Formula One. Is there a market for robots and who's doing it? Where is it? Is, there, is it embryonic and early? Is it, how is this forming you in your mind, this um, marketplace? As we've looked at this, we have been amazed at all the places we're finding robots. Again, we see robots underwater, we see drones in the air, we see robotic arms in factories, we see them in education. I have yet to see an area where a robot can't assist or carry out tasks to help humans. How about doing interviews? <laughs> yeah. We're not going to be replaced yet. No. <laughs> Although we had I, robot on the cube once. This, this, despite the fact we'd like to think how advanced robots are, you can't replace humans. Yeah. Not the our the mobility, our intelligence, our personalities. So yeah, but say, the number of things robots can do keeps getting. You know, it wasn't, wasn't that long ago robots couldn't climb stairs, right? That's right, I mean, that's right. It's amazing what's it happening is. there. Roger, Roger, talk about your goals for the year. What are you trying to do with the with the service? Um, and what can people expect to see coming from AWS? We're definitely going to be listening to our customers now that we've launched them. We're working backwards to actually add features that they tell us they'd like to see. We're really pleased that we've got a partnership with First Robotics. We want to work with, with First to actually bring our service to allow students and learners of all ages to learn robotics. We have an education and research program with about 25 universities with more signing on as well. They're very interested in using the service for teaching robotics and for education and research as well. So I really want to, we really want to push hard there because we think robotics has a great future, it's going to help our lives, and we think RoboMaker's the way that they're going to do well, it. Well I can tell you from my four kids living in Palo Alto, which is again, different zip code than middle America, robotics is hot, people like robotics. They like yes. to play with the robotics and it has now with software democratization tools and frameworks, yes. you don't need to be a rocket scientist to code up yeah. machine language. Yeah. I mean, that, that's I think the power of our service is that basically the developers no longer limited to the code they write and the software they can, hardware they can put on their robot. They can take advantage of cloud services, yeah. glue them together and start building a robot. Well, we're very interested in covering uh, what goes on with your area and certainly want to know more about how the community's developing. Certainly the open source, I think, is going to be a very big part of your plan. We agree, we're committed. Roger, thanks for coming on, great insight. Thank RoboMaker, you. one of the top announcements. There's a great demo on the keynote uh, from the, the Formula One uh, spokesperson on the executive. Great demo that I think is worth watching. Congratulations on the success. Thanks guys. More CUBE coverage here. No robots here. We're live coverage. Reinvent 2018. We'll be right back. <laughs>